Let's take a look at the 6'6 sophomore out of Arizona, Benedict Matherin. And as with all my breakdowns, I want to start with the shooting. I'm not going to show you a bunch of catch and shoot, but I did want to highlight the dip. It's very elongated. It's very elaborate. Maybe it ends up not mattering because of the sheer elevation he has, and he's comfortable shooting with the hand in his face, but I did want to take note. Now, off the dribble, I love this clip right here as you see him come to a stop and then he's able to rebalance himself, reset his feet, and rise up and knock it down. Not an easy shot. And then here against TCU, he hunted this shot the whole possession as you see him go into the one-two step and just able to rise up from depth and knock it down. Tough shot there in a big moment. If there's one thing I'd like to see him improve a little bit, and especially as good an athlete as he is, is how much space he creates on his sidestep and step back. So it just didn't create a lot of separation there again with the elevation maybe it doesn't matter but it's the same thing with his step back he knocks down the shot but I think he could create more separation and then coming off screens off movement here baseline out of bounds again you see the very low dip in the shot but he elevates so high and is able to shoot with the contest it ends up not mattering so if he's able to hit those shots on the move off the dribble man he's really dangerous from the three-point line one area I think absolutely that has to improve is in the mid-range pull-up as you see him just not knock that one down and then here as we kind of look at his off the dribble stuff here with a little bit more of a push floater again he's such a fluid athlete it always looks good I don't know what's necessarily wrong with it but he didn't look very good in those situations from the games I watched one thing he definitely improved throughout the season was his off the dribble game in general though this Wichita State game the possession before he doesn't even attack in this situation here he does and then you see him make the wrong decision with the turnover and I think part of it is his handle just isn't super tight and he's not super confident with it in transition against USC there. You see he gets away from him, ends up dribbling off his own leg. We're going to talk more about the defensive rebounding a little bit later, but I want to see more of these contested rebounds as you see him go up against a big there in UCLA and come away with the ball. He does have wiggle. Again, you're going to hear me talk about it a lot, his athleticism, and he's very fluid, but here you see him use it. Okay, so he gets by the defense, and in all these clips now, you're going to see him get to the lane, but what's the finishing package as you see him get blocked there by Peyton Watson? And again, here against UCLA, he's going to get downhill, and with his explosive vertical pop, he should be putting this ball through the rim on Hama Haquez, but you see him almost go for the finish off the backboard, allowing Haquez to get up and block it. I'll show you later why I just feel like he could have just rose up and dunked it. Again here, in transition, goes right by Campbell. He's going to attack the body of Jaquez. He plays through it, but it doesn't, isn't able to finish, ends up with an air ball. So you, you see him getting to the rim, but what is the finishing package? So here's a few things he did show off one foot here, able to reverse, nice finish. This is one of my favorite clips using the ball screen, plays it with a little hesitation, a little pace, and then attacks the big and able to finish with his left. So beautiful finish there. And then absolutely what he got better at throughout the year was creating for teammates in these DHO ball screen situations. Drops it off for his big there with the bounce pass. And then here back against TCU, you're going to see a real nice lob pass to Coloco who finishes it. What else does he bring offensively? That's always important to make note of as well. Offensive rebounding. The kid is really, really good on the offensive boards. He had a putback poster in this game, but this is the one that impressed me. So he kind of bounces around, reads it off the rim, goes into taxes and finishes it. And then here, maybe the biggest play of the game against TCU in the NCAA tournament, just sheer will. Okay, A little bit of athleticism as well. Able to go up and get it, and then he's going to play through contact. He just plays with an attitude and an intensity that we'll talk more about when we talk about his defense and then he's a great cutter one he knows when to cut two he's got that twitchiness and that explosiveness and then three he's a good shooter so I showed you him coming off these screens on baseline out of bounds here he's going to set his man up go back door he's able to catch and then just explode right away so those are the ones like why isn't he dunking on Jaquez in that clip earlier and then again here great timing Cuts off his man, able to catch one dribble, and then just explodes to the rim. So you see the vertical pop there. So offensive rebounding and cutting is another two other things he can bring on the offensive end. Now defense. Fights through screens. I love it. If there's one issue with him, it's off ball and he gets caught ball watching. He's the low man. And I can show you clips where he does a really good job of this. But here he gets caught ball watching, loses track of it, doesn't help 
and then the defensive boards. This is a rebound he should go get. The offensive boards, he really competes. I would like to see him compete on the defensive boards just a little bit better. And then he has a knack, okay, in a negative way for losing his man, losing shooters off the ball. So here he should be switching on the weak side, completely loses the shooter, gives up an open look. But it's not all bad on that defensive end. Even off ball, you see him communicating with his big here. Going to help as he recovers coming through the screen. And then he's going to close out to his man. And then when the ball goes inside, he knows to come and double. Does a great job here. I've seen him have some good rotations off ball as well. So it's a little bit of a mixed bag, but you can see the upside with it. On ball, I'm actually fully bought in, absolutely fully bought in. Closes out on Johnny Juzang here, moves his feet, stays in front, and then he's just a pest and disruptive, active hands there. He's going to frustrate some guys, and that's why I wanted to finish with these final two clips against Tennessee. Gets up under the ball, he's going to be active with his hands, and he's just going to be frustrating. Watch this entire possession and how he just frustrates the entire offensive possession from Tennessee. He's willing to fight over screens, fight through screens, so if you want to play a non you know switching defense he's a guy that's going to fight through screens denies there on the handoff helps on the drive and then even contests out there at 35 feet completely disrupts the Tennessee possession and then we're going to see again in the second half willing to get up and guard on the ball again fully bought into what he brings on the ball here, handoff, switch, sees it, again, gets up, contests, gets beat a little bit, but he has the athleticism and the fluid hips to recover, drive, he's going to help again on it with it for a teammate, and stays in front, catch, going to get up and guard again on the ball screen, a little bit of communication, a little bit late on if they're going to trap it, but eventually comes, and you just see how disruptive he can be. Fully bought in on the ball, off ball has a little bit of work, combined with the offense, you got to like what you see from Benedict Matherin.